Hey everybody, Seth with Everyman Prepping here. Back with you. It's been a few days off. I've been busier than a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest. Who else has been that busy out there? Give a thumbs up. Uh, type something down below in the comments. Let us know if you've been busy doing all your prep work, outside work. Weather's getting better. Spend time with the family, whatever you've been doing. But I want to get to you today. and We're going to look at some stuff. We're going to look at the Iran helicopter crash. My opinion, have people ask me what I think is going on. So we'll get into that. We're going to talk about Russian space weapons, the Russian nuclear drills, what's going on with the pier in Gaza, the new U.S. $320 million pier. Also, what is Norway, Ireland, and Spain doing to uh, Israel right now? We're going to talk a little bit about the southern border in California. Good luck to you Californians out there after you hear this story. And also, the EPA has some warnings out, along with DHS, for some other home uh, problems we need to look at. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into this here. And we're going to start with the Iranian helicopter crash that, as we all know by now, killed the president, the foreign minister, a whole bunch of other people. And, you know, it. Uh, they said it was bad weather, crashed into a hillside. You can see here from the photo here, let's blow it up. There you go. You can see, obviously, just the tail section left. No one survived from that crash. Uh, I believe today, Thursday, when I'm doing this video, they're doing the uh, funeral. Uh, Putin with his four fighter jet escort is going to Iran to show his support and also offer his investigation help into, you know, why this happened. Uh, now, that being said, I want to talk about what I think might be happening. This is another picture just so you can check out here. Let me blow it up a little bit. Uh, you know, you got the crash site here, um, you know, rugged terrain. The weather doesn't look too bad here. It's actually greener than I thought it would be, you know, uh, you know, a lot of interpretation, you know, when you look, think of Iran as desert, rocky hills. This is pretty nice and green hills, hills here. I don't know if it's because it's springtime or whatnot. Maybe it turns dead here in a few months, kind of like California hills do, uh, other parts of the country. But uh, that's where it happened. And then we're going to go to this. We have this uh, post by an Iranian um, general out there. Uh, I'll leave it up if you want to pause and read it. But basically, it kind of explains what happened. There were three helicopters in the entourage. The lead helicopter is the one that crashed. It had all the important people on it, which I find odd to start with. Uh, why does the lead helicopter have the president, the foreign minister, and if the weather's bad, why are they leading? leading? Usually for security, if you have two of the helicopters, you got one in the front, one in the back, important people in the middle, um, you know, standard operating procedure most of the time. Um, you know, this says here that, you know, the lead helicopter, they told the other two helicopters, when they saw some fog, you need to raise up, go above them. So they did. Why didn't the lead helicopter go above them? You know, they're saying that we, we advanced for approximately 30 seconds. We look back, no lead helicopter. Didn't see it anymore. It wasn't ascending. It's gone. You know, they flew to a, uh, I'll scroll up a little bit. You can see they flew to a copper mine for about a minute and 30 seconds. Didn't have that. Didn't find the helicopter, so they went back. Um, but why did it take almost a day to find these? You know, they, even in this little uh, write-up, they said the weather wasn't that bad. There was no bad weather. There was just a little patch of fog, and that's why they ascended above it. So... Did the helicopter pilot crash in on purpose? Did something malfunction? Uh, it, it's a big mystery. It doesn't seem like it's just a simple case of bad weather, plane crashed. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense what things happen. Like I said, Russia is helping Iran uh, investigate this. Are they going to say, oh, Mossad or Israel or a three-letter organization for the United States is involved or NATO or whatever? Uh, you know, who knows? Could they use it? You know, I don't know. Is, is it embarrassing to Iran this happened? Yes. You know, that the, their president was killed in a helicopter crash. So um, we shall see what's going to happen from this. But uh, there might be blowback. There might be, you know, something that uh, in the investigation they find out that they can blame on Israel. I don't know. Could have just been pilot error. You know, the pilot told the other two to get up to avoid the uh, hillside. And he didn't have time. Something malfunctioned. And then he crashed into the, the hillside. And that, that was the end of it. Why is the lead helicopter? It's weird. Why it wasn't behind, why there wasn't another helicopter first to do, kind of search these things out. That makes no sense, but that's where I'm at. Could be a foul play. I think this doesn't seem right. I think there's something else that's going on, and I think we're going to find out what it is. Whether the truthful answer comes out or not, I got a feeling we're going to come out that it's not a natural cause, and Iran's going to blame somebody. So that's where we are with that. Now let's move on to this. We're saying here that, you know, the U.S. Department of Defense now believes that Russian satellite launch on May 16th, which they uh, issued that notum, you know, the notes to airmen off the coast of California, was a cover for a counter space weapon. So the Russians put a counter space weapon in, in, in orbit. Now they say it's in a low Earth orbit and it's uh, tracking near several U.S. military satellites. 
Uh, and if we go into this here, you know, they talk more about it here, but I want to show you, you know, off the coast of, coast of Baja, California, they had this area selected out where the boosters were going to land. Could they have landed somewhere else? Yes. Was this a big F you to the United States? Yeah, probably. See, we're going to we're going to land our boosters right off your coast, by the way, for this uh, you know, launch of these uh, of this spy satellite, or this military satellite that's now going to be hovering, orbiting around your military satellites that we could probably take out. So uh, Russia is militarizing the space. The United States is probably doing it. China's definitely doing it. I mean, every couple, every week or so, China's sending, sending up two or three more satellites into space. And I don't think it's just for, you know, TV and communications and GPS. I, I got to believe they're weaponizing as well. You know, it's going to take one simple thing when, when it's go time, when something happens. These are going to take out military GPS, military communications, civilian communications, uh, whether they're EMP or nuclear up there, who knows. But, you know, when China, Russia or... When they want to do go time, they you know, want to disable everything up above so they can take everything down below. So that's what's happening with the, the military satellite launches. Moving on from there, what do we have here? Ah, uh, the weapons drill. Yeah, let's, let's watch this video. Let's put this on the loop. Let's just watch this here. So this is the uh, Russians doing their you know, nuclear dr drills. You know, Putin came out and said, we're going to do some tactical nuclear drills. We're going to do it right on the border of Ukraine to show how serious we are. We're, you know, basically they're still pissed that, you know, F-16s are going in there, long-range weapons are going into Ukraine, uh, all the NATO support. So what do we do? Nuclear drills. Yes, this heightens tension. Um, you know, this is basically Putin and Russia coming out against NATO and them saying, we're serious. You guys don't knock this off. You know, we might have to use one of these. We might have to do a demonstration, you know, whether it be, you know, somewhere remote, whether it be in Ukraine itself. You know, maybe, uh, you know, we got to show you that we're serious. And they're doing this with live warheads on there. It's being reported. They're not just doing dummy warheads. They're training with the live nukes on there, driving around. Um, you know, and when you do this, you know, it's just not an exercise. You're ready to go right then. If you have them live nukes on there and you're training, well, you're also ready for live action. So they're ready to go. You got tensions with Poland and Belarus and all those people. Um, you know, border fights in the Baltic Sea, all kinds of stuff. So, uh Definitely not a slowdown in what's going on between Russia and NATO, United States. In fact, hey, we got a new uh, submarine launched ballistic missile from Russia. You know, May 7th, they introduced it into service. You know, it carries uh, almost 1,200 kilograms of payload. It's launched out of uh, submarines, nuclear capable, of course. You know, why not? They just keep introducing more and more weapons. By the way, you don't hear anything coming out of the United States or NATO with new stuff coming out. We have our old aging technology, aging defense. Uh, yeah, basically, we're, we're, I think we're resting on our laurels. It's not resting on our laurels. It's not looking so hot for the grand old United States of America. Switching over to Gaza really quick. We got a report coming out of Drudge here. Seventy percent of Gaza aid from the U.S. built pier is being stolen. Boy, who would have guessed that when you send aid into a hostile Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip that it's not going to make it to the U.N. So. As it says, it's a three, close to three-quarters of the humanitarian aid from the $320 million floating pier built by the U.S. military is being stolen before it gets to the U.N. Uh, positions or warehouses, they're saying, in Gaza. I don't know if this is an actual uh, file photo or not, but it shows people raiding a truck. It could be uh, what's happening there or not. I don't know, but let's look at the pier. Look at that beautiful thing they built. Also... First thing I thought when I saw this is like, dang, that's a beautiful area. Look at that ocean. Look at that sandy beaches. I mean, if Gaza and the Gaza Strip, it wasn't full of like, you know, terrorists and Hamas and war and death and Sharia law and all that. Imagine the tourism they could have. Imagine the, you know, who'd want, a lot of you want to go vacation. It's got beautiful beaches. Look at the water. It'd be a beautiful place, but it went the other way. That's the first thing I see when I see this. It looks beautiful over there. If you just take all the death, destruction and torture and everything out of it but here's the pier right here i'm surprised it hasn't been bombed yet but there's also been sightings of u.s troops on there it's not supposed to be u.s troops on the ground but they've been sighted there as well and we got the food being stolen of course why not because the money you send to ukraine that gets stolen as well also we've just today yesterday norway ireland and spain said you know what the icc the international criminal court they said uh, you know we're going to issue an arrest warrant we're looking at it you know into israel and to some people in gaza and, you know, Norway, Ireland, and Spain said, we're going to arrest Netanyahu. If he comes here, we're arresting him. 
That, of course, pissed Israel off. They're recalling their amb ambassadors from those three countries. Like I said, when ambassadors started getting recalled around the world, you know, tensions are heightened, war is coming. It's very unusual that NATO members, you know, Spain, Ireland, Norway, um, are taking that stance against Israel. Israel is not in NATO, but they might as, well, might as well will be, should be, because they're treated and supported as such. So very interesting that they are turning against, uh, maybe it's just not really turning against Israel, maybe they're just turning against Net not Nahayu, I don't know. There's a lot of people in Israel also writing, protesting against him. So, um, you know, when, when he's getting a ton of pressure, big, huge rallies against Netanyahu. So, you know, I'd like for something big to happen. He's got to turn their attention to war or something else so he can stay in power. Ah, uh, speaking of staying in power, well, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, we'll get to the stuff in a minute. Today, as of today, um, basically, uh, Zelensky in Ukraine is ruling by military law. He's ruling, r ruling um, by um, martial law, we should say. Because he called for no elections, his term ended officially. So now he's basically president by martial law. Uh, Russia doesn't recognize him as a legitimate president. They say he's on the basically the wanted list, dead or alive. So that's the state of Ukraine. Let's get to the United States really quick here. We see this here. Uh, let's blow this up a little bit. That um, Bill Mel Melguin, I think that's how you pronounce it. Pronounce it. Even though he is from Box, he's reporting for the first time since the 90s that San Diego sector is seen an increase uh, of illegal, the most, increase, most illegal crossings uh, in the United States. Masses of men from the Middle East and Asia are pouring in. In fact, I want to start this over. Let's see what he has to say about this. Let me just pause it really quick here, make sure we got the volume on everything so you can hear. Dana, good morning to you. For the first time since the 1990s, Border Patrol San Diego sector is now seeing the most illegal crossings of anywhere on the southern border. Anywhere. And we were out here Texas, during the overnight Arizona. hours as masses of men from around the world came through here. Take a look at this video. This was 2 a.m. right where I'm standing, right here in Hacumba, California, about an Asian hour east there. of downtown yeah. San Diego as we watch men from the Middle East and Asia pouring in here very nonchalantly as they All cross men. illegally. Several of them are what are known as special interest aliens. That means they are coming in from countries with potential national security concerns and they should be subject to additional DHS vetting. We talked to these guys. All They're right, it goes on from there, but basically what you're seeing there is fighting age male men, male men, fighting age men um, coming into our country, walking across. They don't even have to like sneak across. They just stroll across border, you know, welcome. This is California. They're probably welcoming them. They're probably feeding them and everything when they come in, give them a ride wherever they want to go. Uh, who knows what's going on over there? But they're, uh, that's a big fighting force coming in uh, to, the, to the country here from, like I said, it, this isn't just Latin America, Mexicans, Hispanics. No, these are Middle East. These are Asians, uh, Chinese, uh, you know, whatever they are from over there coming in. And um, they look pretty healthy. And uh, I'm not sure they're really coming for asylum. I don't know. What do you think? Put it in the comments below. But not, not look good for the United States and, and California on that one there. Lastly, let's end up on this here. We have the EPA has issued a warning for cyber attacks on U.S. water systems that are on the rise, urging utilities to take immediate action. So drinking water, going to be poison, uh, maybe mixed with chemicals that aren't good for you, maybe polluted. We don't know. Uh, we've also, you know, also saw the threats against the electrical grid. So be able to uh, get your own water, purify it, whether it means that be, whether it's boiling or filtering it or whatever you got, make sure you can get your own water. Make sure you can make your own electricity somehow, whether that's, you know, solar, a gas power generator, a tri-fuel, dual fuel generator, uh, battery backs, whatever you have, yeah, get your own power, get your own water because as we're being told, Basically, something's going to happen. Uh, you know, and I've always talked about this. Make sure you have your own food, of course. So hopefully, you've all been out gardening, getting that ready. And as you're gardening now, you got the stuff in there. You're weeding it. And you're feeding it. You're, you're, you're taking care of it. You're, you know, you're looking for that big yield. Start thinking now about how you're going to preserve your extra. Are you going to dehydrate it? Are you going to can it? Uh, are you going to freeze dry it if you're lucky enough to have a freeze dryer? That's my goal uh, this year. Somehow get a freeze dryer. I'm looking to use one right now, but... We'll talk about it in another video. So look at ways now of preserving. Now that you got the stuff growing and you just got it in the ground and you got to keep up with it, think about how you can preserve your extra because you're going to want to have extra. You're going to want to save extra, uh, not only for the fact of the cost, but because you're probably going to need it. 
So that's all I have for you. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you got something out of it. And until next time, keep your ear to the ground, head on a swivel.